Heyo everybody, Haku here with my review for Tower of God Chapter 379, or Season 2, Episode 299. Uh, gonna be getting into Episode 300 next week. Wow, that's pretty, um, pretty incredible. I feel like we were just talking about getting to Episode 200. Time has flown. Um, but yeah, either way, sorry this review is a day late, um, because I was doing a bunch of stuff yesterday. But uh, either way, it shouldn't be on Wednesdays anymore. It should be on Tuesdays basically every week. But I think for this chapter, maybe waiting a day longer didn't really hurt much. Um, I loved it. I thought it was very, very good. Uh, but there isn't exactly a ton to talk about. Uh, and that's often the way it is for really good things when you see an episode of something. Because there's nothing to really pick apart or criticize. It's There's a lot of detail often in good stuff. Um, but even then, you, it's hard to go through and explain why everything is good if it's good. It's easier to go through and explain if things are wrong or if you didn't like things. Uh, but yeah, I thought this was very good. Though I knew when reading, I was like, okay, it's mostly combat. It's going to be kind of short um, discussion-wise. It's going to be short content-wise because a lot of the content, a lot of the imagery is going to be uh, just shots of them fighting. But even without taking that into account, just looking at the actual length from top to bottom, it was kind of a short chapter, both in content and in actual length. Uh, but even being short, I don't think it hurt this chapter. I thought this chapter was um, still good nonetheless. It was enough content packed in that it really, um, it didn't feel as short as it actually was. Uh, but either way, let's start from the beginning. We see that Bomb is afraid, but he knows the importance of this fight. And I really like something about this fight uh, that he kind of hints at here is this is experience fighting against Zahard. One day he'll have to fight against the real Zahard, and the real Zahard won't have experience fighting against Bomb, but Bomb will have fought against Zahard once before. He'll have fought against this data version. So I think that this is actually extremely... Uh, powerful for the series, showing that Zahard is maybe, maybe not final boss, but possibly final boss of the entire series for Bomb, and yet we're seeing him uh, get this experience edge on him already, and we're seeing him learn about him, whereas the real Zahard isn't learning about Bomb. We don't know how much he already knows about him, or how much he can observe from wherever he is, but as far as we know, he isn't learning about Bomb, but Bomb is learning about Zahard and how to defeat him already. Um, Bomb is able to dodge at first because Zahard's just playing around, but Zahard ends up stepping it up a little bit and just beating him down pretty easily. Uh, Zahard mentions that he went through Revolution 2, he went inside of himself, and he learned he had the destiny of a king. No matter what choice he made, he would always end up ruling everyone. And so we're kind of seeing into the data Zahard's mindset where maybe that was the start off on his road to corruption and power corrupting him is that uh, he figured no matter what I do I have to be king anyway and one way or another he went from being the kind loving adventurer to being like well if I have to be a king I have to be strict and do all of this and it made him arrogant it made him separate from his friends kind of uh, and I think more so it's the demon or whatever is inside of him that did it, because we do see that there is something within Zahard. Um, I think it's more that than anything, but we're getting to see how his mindset played a part in that too. Uh, and he brings up, you know, what was the destiny inside of you? I think that if anything, the destiny inside a bomb, my prediction, my guess, I would say would be the destiny of a slayer. The destiny to kill Zahard, to hell, maybe even kill the God of the Tower, I don't know, but he has the destiny of a slayer, F-U-G slayer, but he's going to be fighting against that destiny, fighting against the, uh, the king killer, the god killer, um, destiny. And I think that's good because it's a macrocosm of what we've already seen with him fighting against his destiny of joining up with F.U.G. to be F.U.G. Slayer. Um, but Bomb meets up, we have a flashback to during his revolution, I guess, Bomb meeting up with his viol self and the blue demon within him. They mention the Thorn and Thrissa. Uh, Bomb finally accepts that he needs to ask for the power. He needs this power. And I like that. He's like, in order to beat Zahard, I need this. I can't keep running away from it. I have to accept this. 
and he brings up how everyone expects him to kill Zahard, and I brought up in the live reaction how this gave me a ton of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender uh, feels, where that was the same story they told with Aang throughout the entirety of the show, was that everyone, and especially the final book, I guess, because um, the uh, seasons were called books, um, but you know what I mean if you've watched, where everyone's expecting him to kill the Fire Lord, but does he really want to kill somebody even if that solves all these problems? And we're having the same story told here with Bomb, where everyone's expecting him to kill Zahard. Uh, not, I mean, not everyone, but F.U.G., and it seems like even the other members of his group are like, that's going to be an inevitability eventually when we get to the top. It'll probably be something that has to happen, because we see the rest of Bomb's group, the majority of them have reasons to take down Zahard too, their own reasons. Um, so that's all going to happen, and he's thinking, you know, it would solve all these people's problems if I kill Zahard, but is there any other way? Is there something else I can do? Um, so I like that we're telling the same story again, because it's a very good story to be told. Um, so uh, then he fights back against Zahard back in the present time. Uh, the first core is exposed as Zahard is just dis demolishing him with the golden needle. Um, then Bomb has the orb used for defense, and it seems like maybe he did it on purpose, but it could be argued that, because he's like, oh, I'm still safe, and we see that he used it somehow defensively by spinning Shinzo around himself from the orb. Uh, but because he said it in kind of a surprised way, I took it as, oh, he's surprised that even with his defense he was able to withstand it, but he could be, you could argue that he was surprised that the orb even defended him in the first place, so maybe it was something that happened instinctively or by the work of somebody inside of him or whatever. Um, but, uh, then we see the viol inside himself, the rest of what he was saying, and he was telling Bom to just be himself and make his own decisions. That's the way he's always been, and that's the way he has to be. Then the uh, orb Shinsu turns gold, and we cut away before we get to see what that means. Uh, and we get to see something I'm very, very excited for, probably my favorite... Uh, well, not really my favorite part, but probably the part that hyped me up the most is Mazano is going to be teaming up with Kunagar Wagnus's group and uh, Icarus slash Joaquin's group, and they're going to be going to destroy the scale, so I think that's really cool. Because what I thought we were going to get when Huang was talking about a game or whatever, I was like, are we just going to get a side fight between uh, Joaquin's group and Agro Agnes's group? I really don't want to see that. Because I think if Rachel and Joaquin lose, that kind of makes them look a little bit too weak. Um, but then if Agro Agnes's group loses after they've all just gone through all this quality training or whatever, that's kind of not very good for them either. So I don't really want to see them fight here because either one of them losing uh, doesn't help the character very much at this point in the story. So I like that they're going to be forced to team up and work with Mazano to try to destroy the scale. Um, and that means that Huang is in on that as well, and that, I would guess, destroying the scale may be part of their plan to escape. I still, we still don't know what the goal is as readers, but my prediction is still that they're trying to somehow escape into the real world. Um, so yeah, episode as a whole, I'll save the blog for last because there's something important to discuss. Uh, episode as a whole, I thought it was great. Even if it was short, it didn't matter because it was so good. I love the character work we got with Bomb, still very good. And the ending has me incredibly, incredibly hyped. So I'm going to end up giving it 8.75 Golden Needles out of 10 because it was really, really good. Um, and yeah, for the blog, not, too, not really anything that I thought CU said about this chapter that was important, but there was a huge lore section that I thought was important where occasionally he'll do this, uh, just, I guess it gets in his head, or somebody says something that sort of triggers it, and he's like, you know, I should talk about this for the lore. So we talked about disease in the tower, which I thought was really cool. He said that different bloodlines in the tower are prone to, diff or, prone to or immune to different diseases, that uh, Yiwa is basically immune to almost all diseases, but she can still catch colds, uh, he mentions that the Ten Families have really strong resistances and immunities to diseases. And he says that in the Tower there is no cancer, but there's sort of the, the Tower of God version of cancer. In the Tower there is no cancer, but as people get older, the Shinsu can cause their cells to malfunction, and that sort of 
acts like cancer would in the real world, and also bad health management can lead to the same condition. So uh, it shows that uh, that's a big kill, and that's something we've never been introduced to in the story, but it's a good bit of lore, and I found it really, really interesting. So that was good from the blog. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and get this video up. I'm actually surprised. There, there was a lot to talk about. I got to 10 minutes with this. Um, but yeah, I wasn't even expecting to get past like six or seven minutes discussing this because of how short the chapter was. Uh, but yeah, it was really, really good for its length. Um, so I'll, I'll be back with the next... Actually, no, it won't. you won't have to wait for more Tower of God until next week because we have the hot Q&A in a couple days. Um, so yeah, I'll be getting to answering comments. Sorry, I'm a little bit behind on that. Um, but uh, yeah. I guess that's it. Like, if you did like the video, comment down there. Tell me what you thought of this chapter, what you thought of my thoughts on it. Uh, subscribe for more Tower of God, much more on the channel. Follow on Twitter if you want. I can try to keep you updated there instead of the channel. And uh, if, you want, if you want a link to our Discord server to talk to me or more of us there, then just ask and I can give you a link to that. So that's it. Thank you once again for watching, and we'll see you all next time.